As healthcare providers, we know that HPV is incredibly common, with approximately one in four Americans currently infected with HPV, and an estimated 14 million new infections annually. It's very expensive, eight billion in annual HPV-related healthcare costs, and dangerous. If HPV isn't cleared by the body, it can lead to all this. And you are critical in preventing these cancers. Your recommendation of the HPV vaccine as a normal part of the adolescent vaccine schedule can result in up to 90% of parental approval and is often cited as the number one reason that parents accept its use. However, studies have shown that healthcare providers are not routinely recommending the HPV vaccine. And even if you are recommending the vaccine... So, we also have a vaccine for HPV, a very common STD. Would you like that for Katie as well? Your body and voice might be saying something else. Crossed arms, leaning away from the patient, voice sounding tentative. And here's what parents might be thinking. This vaccine can't be that important. I've never even heard of it. And besides, Katie's years away from having sex. Why are we even talking about this now? But the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention clearly recommend that 11 and 12 year olds get the vaccine. Doing so enhances immunogenicity. How can we make sure that parents are getting the message? There are three main things that parents need to know about this vaccine. The HPV vaccine can prevent cancer. Most sexually active people will acquire HPV at least once in their lifetime. So the American Academy of Pediatricians recommends routine vaccination of both boys and girls. The HPV vaccine has been proven safe. If we remember to emphasize these three things, we can guide more parents to make the best choice for their kids. Cancer preventing. Parents often don't know the links between HPV and cancer. There are about 36,000 of these cancers each year caused by HPV. Try saying, Each year, 36,000 people are diagnosed with cancer that result from HPV. Most of the HPV-related cancer can be prevented with this vaccine, and I strongly recommend that Katie get her first of three shots today. Routine. Parents may not know that the government and numerous health organizations have reviewed extensive research and recommend the HPV vaccine for both boys and girls well before they are sexually active. They may be confused as to why their 11 or 12 year old should be protected against HPV when they aren't even sexually active. If parents ask, wait, isn't Katie a little young for this? Try saying, HPV is so common that almost everyone will get it at some point in their lives. And even if Katie waits until she's married before she has sex, or if she just has one partner, she could still catch HPV if she's not protected by this vaccine. It's part of our routine vaccination package, just like our vaccine for mumps and measles. Safe. Parents may fear side effects from an unfamiliar vaccine. Try saying, I highly recommend this vaccine. I've given it to my son and daughter. It's easy and simple, so let's do it today. Emphasizing your personal recommendation to get the HPV vaccine helps parents feel secure in their decision. Presenting the vaccine as a normal part of the adolescent vaccine platform results in up to 90% parental approval. There's usually no need for an extensive discussion. Remember, you are critical in preventing cancer. Taking the time to clearly communicate your recommendations pays off. It saves lives. Mm -hmm.